All right, let's talk about inheritance, because eh, it's bothering me that we scripted this so wrong with uh, the frog in here. So okay, so right now when we're jumping on this frog, it's, it just counts as a frog. But say, what if we make an eagle or something like that? Are we gonna have to program each one of those things inside the player right here? We're gonna say, oh, a frog and an eagle. If it's any of these things, and then what if we have like 50 enemies? Like, how hard is that? Well. We can actually make it a lot easier. So what we can do is we can go into our scripts over here, which by the way, we got to move our frog over to that. And I just totally screwed this thing's life. No problem. So we go in there, we're going to right click and we're going to go create. We're going to go C sharp script. We're going to call this script enemy. And you want to make sure that, uh, the enemy is, uh, named correctly like if you exited it out there on accident or anything like that it will actually like name this class something different it'll be named whatever you had on there so i'll give you guys an example if you go create you go c sharp script and you exit out you go create you go c sharp script and you accidentally hit enter or something and then you go oh wait a minute i wanted to name you uh i don't know eagle right Say that why is this bringing this up every time i really shouldn't be doing that uh eagle you still see it still says new behavior script over here right so it's it's messing up right so anyway deleting that for now you don't want it to be like that what is wrong with you <laughs> stop coming up uh we're gonna double click on enemy bring that up now we want you to come up thank you and we're gonna delete everything in here in between we're going to go ahead and take our Froggy wherever he is. We're going to double click on Froggy as well. We're going to be cutting out Jumped On right here. And we're going to be doing this. And we're going to do the same thing with Death because that's going to run the same no matter which, uh, which enemy it is. Like this, right? Now, because because private animator it uses anim on there right we're gonna say anim and we're gonna of course then we of course have to have the start function public start not state again void start or private void start sorry void start i cannot type today animator anim equals get component animator like this All right so everything's basically the same as it was before we're getting the animator we're triggering it and we're doing this on there right now what's going to change here is this script right here isn't going to inherit from mono behavior anymore it's going to inherit from enemy so it still has all the mono behavior in there because enemy has mono behavior. So this inherits from there and that's where we get the start uh, functions and a bunch of the unity stuff. But this is actually gonna inherit from enemy and it's gonna have, and that's gonna give it the ability to uh, do what it was doing before, right? Um, now, a, a common practice, like you can still do it this way where you say anim equals uh, get component animator because we still have this uh, variable right here inside there by the way we need to actually turn this to protected which will make it so that our uh, our inherited uh objects can have access to it as well uh otherwise this won't be able to use anim right and then this needs to go away so now this still has access to anim inside of it from here because this is protected if this was private it would not have access to that but now it does and we can get rid of this now the problem here is that this is actually running a uh, private void start right so we're probably gonna run into a problem here watch this so if i go ahead and run this you're gonna see an issue pop up where it's saying here we go not finding something right and if you go in there and look you're gonna say oh wait a minute we don't have the animator inside of here because it's running its own start we gotta fix that. So currently we have two problems going on. One, this frog right here has no access to this private void start. This is strictly within the enemy. Private means even your inherited ones can't get access to it, right? 
So in order to give your inherited uh, people access, you say protected. This is like uh, this basically means oh you can you can only uh, have access to this if you're one of my children. If you're somebody that has this on you, right? So you go protected. And another problem is uh, nobody has the ability. Even if I have this on here, they don't have the ability to do anything to it. So we're gonna make this virtual. This means that you can actually take this and you can make it your own. Right? So we're on protected virtual. Now we're going to say protected override void start. Right? Then we have our own start function there. We're going to go base dot start so that we can access the start from the previous thing. I'm going to explain what all this means here in a moment. But theoretically, this should all now work. Right, you see all my errors went away, and the frog should be working correctly at this point. And there we go. I jump on his head, boom, explosion, he's gone, everything's working exactly as it was before. Why is this now working? Well, base not start, base is always what's inside of this enemy. So you can see even here when I highlight it, it's actually going into it's highlighting enemy as well. It's because base is is uh, whatever you inherit from. So it's going, okay, base, uh, I should run his start function. I look in the start function here. Oh, what do you know? The start function over here is actually protected, so I have access to it. And I'll go ahead and get the animator. If I add more things onto here, it'll automatically do more things here. So for instance, if I say print show an example, even though I make no changes inside the frog at all, I hit the play button on here. And we know I'm showing an example. Go back inside of here, you can do this. So there's a couple things here that are needed for this to happen. Protect is what allows for all your children to use things instead of private, which doesn't. Public also works, but that makes it so everything can use it, not just your children. Um, virtual makes it so that things can override you. So things can like change what you do, which is what the frog over here is doing. So frog is saying, okay, I'm gonna override that and I'm gonna add my own stuff to it, but I'll also do what you do. If we don't do this part right here, we won't do anything that's inside of here. So we go base, and I'm gonna run your same start function. We name it start because it's what this is called, start. Uh, we could do base dot anything, by the way. I say base dot death if I want to, and I can use that as well. And because I'm running it within my start function, I use whatever is inside of enemy, and I also do my own thing, adding my collider and my uh, frigid body. All right, so frog and enemy now all work correctly. The player controller, on the other hand, still only works with frog. So if we go over here and say enemy, we change this, and actually we're gonna do, we're gonna select this, and we're gonna go control RR, we're gonna name that to enemy, we're gonna hit apply. I change the name here and here. And now, oh, and we're gonna change this to enemy as well. And so now it'll always get the enemy, and because the enemy has all the stuff that we need to have jumped on on it, which is the only thing that player controller is using, you see that? We can actually go back into here, run through all these cherries, and jump on his head. And, it, and now it works. We have a complete uh, system there. And uh, the beauty of the system is that it scales well, meaning that I can create an eagle script, have it do completely different things in the frog, just fly around, do whatever. And I can still jump on his head and he'll still blow up and everything like that because he'll still be an inheriting from the enemy script. So as long as I make eagle inherit from enemy, it'll still happen the same. All right. So I hope you liked the video. Please hit the like button below and uh, give me a subscription, that bell notification, so you can always find out when I'm making new videos. Um, let's see, what else should we do? Oh, comments. If you can please send some comments and some feedback below, I would love to grow and uh, make a better videos <laughs> for you. So just let me know. Thank you very much. Have a great day.